man, I'm just excited to uh, share with you what I feel like God has for us this morning. And uh, just excited to uh, dive into this new sermon series, Everyday Church, and uh, just see what God has for us. Uh, We're going to be jumping into Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verses 23 through 25 today, if you want to go ahead and turn to that. And while you're turning to that, I'd like to share with you a little statistic that I've found pretty important, I feel like, really can open our eyes to a lot of things. It says, according to January of 2024, a poll by American Psychiatric Association, 30% of American adults feel lonely at least once a week, and 10% feel lonely every day. They said this was an increase since 2019. You know, when we, when we put that into our own life context, when we apply it to our neighbors, one out of three of your neighbors could be feeling lonely. When we apply it to our classmates, maybe at college, over at tech, or our, our fellow employees at our job site, you know, one out of three of our fellow employees could be feeling lonely. We apply it to our families. One out of three of our family members could be feeling lonely and struggling with lonely. And that's why in this passage of Hebrews, it talks about the importance of community. It talks about the importance of not just regular community, but biblical community. And that's what we're going to be looking into. Go ahead, if you're at Hebrews 10.23, I'm going to read that. And it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm it for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good work. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Let's go ahead into prayer and uh, see what God has for us today. God, I just, uh, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that you speak through me I pray you give me the words to say. Pray that as we look in Hebrews today, what you intended for us in community, God, that we will choose not to isolate ourselves, but to jump into it, God, to jump into the community that you built for us. We thank you for your son, God, and what he's done for us. Amen. So the first point when we look at how the gospel is fully experienced in community, the first point is that a gospel community is rooted in hope. But what is this hope that, our, that we should be rooted in? What is this hope? Let's look at Hebrews verse 23 there of chapter 10. It says, let's hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted. Um, What is this hope? This hope is in Jesus Christ. Just like you heard earlier in communion. You know, our hope needs to be founded in Jesus Christ. If we don't have that foundation in Jesus Christ, you'll never be able to fully experience the community of Jesus Christ. You have to have that foundation. Without that foundation, you're not going to be able to grow spiritually at all. You know, Romans 10 verse 9 says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It goes on in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. It says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Guys, we we have to have this foundation in Jesus Christ. If you don't have that foundation, I ask you, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? Why not start today? Because the gospel-oriented community is founded on Jesus. And how do we know that this, this hope that we're supposed to hold tightly to without wavering is true? How do we know that, that this, isn't, this isn't just some bogus stuff? Well, when we look at God's character, when we look at what God's done in the past with the Israelites all throughout the Old Testament, Man, the Israelites were messed up people. And I think we can look at ourselves and see that we're messed up people too. 
And we see that God stayed with the Israelites. All throughout the Old Testament, when the Israelites were trying to run away from him, God was just waiting for them to return to him. And I think he's waiting for you to return to him as well. And so it says in Deuteronomy 7, 9, just reiterates this. It says, understand, therefore, the Lord your God is indeed God. He's faithful. He's a faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his command. He loves us, guys. And if you don't understand that, I, I want you to know that he truly does. I've seen it in my own life. And I know, man, that if you, if you commit to God, that it's going to make a whole big difference in your life to come. This summer, I was blessed with the opportunity to uh, go to American Samoa for two months. And it was an awesome experience. I went over with a team of eight and uh, we were over there just with the sole purpose of sharing the gospel. And our team went from, uh, from local Baptist churches from one to another just to do VBSs. We went around and went from village to village and knocked on doors, inviting kids to come out and just to hear about God and have a fun time. And uh, we saw several kids come to know Christ, which was awesome. And uh, I want you to know, these kids' lives were changed at this young age. And wherever you're, you are in your walk in life, your life can be changed. Our, our uh, last day we were there, we packed up the night before. And we had the day off. And so some of me and my, my teammates went out from the village called Tafuna, which is where we were staying at. And uh, while we were out on this, uh, this last day, I, I met someone that I'd met throughout the, the past weeks. And I just got into a really good conversation with him. Just started talking with him about life and what he was hoping for in the future. And I, I asked him, I said, we'll just, call him, we'll just call him Randy. And I asked Randy, I said, Randy, where are you all at with your relationship with Christ? Where are you at? And he said, uh, said well, you know, my parents, they, they both went to church. They go to separate churches, but they both went to church said, I, I go to church, you know, here and there. And, and I said, well, I said, Randy, you know, these things are good, but have you ever committed your life to Jesus Christ? Because going to church doesn't save. The Bible says, for, we are by, for by grace, we have been saved through faith, not of ourselves, but a gift of God, so that no, none of us can boast. It's not by our work. And he said, well, you know, at a, at a young age, I was, I was baptized as a baby in the church. And I told him, well, that, that doesn't save you. And he, from how I understood, he believed that these actions of being baptized as a baby and going to church every once in a while is what saved him. And guys, religious practices can't save us. They don't get us into heaven. It's a relationship. It's committing to Jesus Christ that gets us to heaven. You know, I was over at McDonald's the other day, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's any McDonald's fans in here, but uh, your doctor's not here. It's okay. It's okay. But I was over at McDonald's, and I pulled out the Mickey D's app and was looking at the points I had, and I realized I had enough for a McChicken. And I'll tell you, I wasn't going to spend any money. I was, I was raised in a pretty frugal home. You know, we, we were couponers. Nothing wrong with it. But uh, I pulled out the app, gave her the code, said, I want that McChicken. I said, okay. I got the McChicken. Was driving home. Definitely waited till I got home to eat that McChicken. Um, but as I ate that McChicken, as I ate that chicken sandwich, I didn't become an employee of McDonald's. Because I ate what they were producing, it didn't make me an employee of McDonald's. And that goes with our faith. That goes with with us who come to church. Just because you come to church, just because you read your Bible, just because you pray, that doesn't make you a Christian because those things are incredible things. And that's how we grow a relationship with Christ. But if you don't have that foundation, if you don't commit, then those things, they, they won't get you to heaven. But if you commit with Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And that, that leads to our second thing because 
when we've experienced Jesus Christ, when we've committed to him, when we've accepted him, that should change how we live our daily lives. That should change how we walk out our lives. If you have made that commitment, man, we should be wanting to share this hope with others. We should be holding to it. We should be holding to that hope and be wanting to share with our non-believers, friends. And if you haven't made that commitment, man, there is, there is no better decision to make than, than following Jesus. It's not easy. Man, life isn't easy. It'll throw you, uh, throw you check engine lights and maybe you'll lose an engine. I might have lost one yesterday. But, but God is good. And he truly is. And the next thing is, as believers, a gospel community bears fruit. A gospel community bears fruit. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 there. It says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good work. When we look at Jesus' teaching, I'm pretty sure we see a pretty common theme. Jesus never intended for us to commit to him and then not do anything. He never intended for us to give our life to him and say we're all in and then the next day not change our bad habits, our sinful ways. He called us to live out on a daily basis to change from those sinful ways. In uh, Luke 9.23, I feel like this is a perfect example. It says, then he said to the crowd, if any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way and take up your cross daily. Follow me. Guys, we're called to give up our own way, and it's not easy. We're called to take up our cross, and it's not easy. I mean, the traffic here, there are times that I, I kind of want to put my cross down and yell at some of the people who are on their phones texting at that green light. I'll tell you, it's, it's getting pretty bad. But we are called to take up our cross. We are called to choose to, to say no to our selfish ways and sacrifice. And even though it's not going to be easy, it's easier when you're linking arms with other believers. When you're in a community that you see, hey, Billy over here is serving. I know I can serve. I'm not the only one fighting for the kingdom of God. It's easier to see when you're in a small group and you realize that other people are struggling, but you can link together and carry each other's burdens. So I want to encourage you, jump into a small group so that you can see that other people are bearing fruit too, that you're not the only one. The other day I was... I went, to, uh, went out to lunch, we grabbed some blessed fried chicken. There's nothing like it. And uh, not going to say what place it is because I, there's, some, there's, some, there's some heat there when you say one chicken place is better than the other in the South. But we sat down, and me and my buddy, we got a meal, and we just started talking about life. We started to encourage each other. We started just to talk about our struggles, what we were going through, the blessings we've been having. And as we were talking, uh, me and my buddy noticed the, a young mom sitting over there with her baby. And um, we, both, we both knew her. And um, I just felt like the Holy Spirit told me, hey, you need to pay for that young mom's meal. You need to bless her. You need to bless her and her new baby. And I'll be honest. When I felt that prompting, I instantly went into defensive mode. I was like, well, God, what if she thinks it's rude? What if, I mean, she's already ordered her meal. She's already sitting down and eating it. It's, that'd be weird. Maybe, maybe, this is just, maybe this is just the chicken that's not sitting well for me. Because I, I, I will admit, it wasn't the Lord's chicken. It wasn't Chick-fil-A. But, put that to the side. And so I was, I, was, I was wrestling with this, and me and my buddy finished up our meal. And instead of walking over to the young mom and her baby to, uh, to bless her, 
I instead went and got a double dose of Dr. Pepper. And uh, while I was feeling up on the DP, my buddy walked over to the young mom. I didn't talk to him during the whole meal. And he said, you know, I just felt like the Lord was prompting you to pay for your meal. And he wanted, he, he followed in obedience. When, when I didn't step out in what the Lord was prompting, I didn't talk to him about what the Lord was prompting me to do. We walked out of that, that restaurant and I said, man, I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you stepping out because I felt like the Lord was prompting me to step out in obedience and pay for this, this young mom's meal. We blessed him. And God reminded me, he used that even though I was disobedient, he used that and reminded me that there are other Christians who are walking out there, who are choosing to bear fruit, who are choosing to be obedient to them. I want to encourage you. It might not be blessing someone at a restaurant and paying for them. It might be something completely different. It might be something weekly. It might be something biweekly. It might be something monthly. But what is God calling you to step out of your comfort zone and listen to his prompting of impacting others? You know, in our church, we, we have three things that, that we kind of surround around that we believe that God's pointed out to us in the, in the Bible, in his word, that it's very important. That's loving God loving people and impacting the world. And that's exactly what Hebrews 10.24 is telling us to, to encourage one another to make an impact. And that's what we're called to do. I didn't do it that day. I, I messed up. We're not perfect. But there's always tomorrow that we can step back up and take that mantle. I want to encourage you, what gifts, what talents has God given you? What skills? I had a buddy who we just bought a motorcycle and he enjoyed to ride it around. And he saw another, another guy on a motorcycle and he just got into a conversation with him and ended up inviting him to church. Because he loves to ride his motorcycles. He used that to farther the kingdom of God. What can you use that God's given you to farther his kingdom? How can you bear fruit? Listen. Just like fruit on a tree is unique to itself, the fruit in our lives is going to be unique to us, okay? Our fruit isn't about the job we do. It's about the obedience we have towards God, what God calls us. I want to challenge you, be obedient. It's not easy, but we're called to take up our cross, put our own ways behind us, and step forward. And that leads us to our next thing, which is that a gospel community does life together. Gospel community does life together. Guys, Sunday is incredible. I would just want to encourage you. Thank you for coming out on Sunday. Thank you for getting into God's word, for being willing to get out here and listen. And I encourage you to take the next step. Maybe this is your first time here. Man, there's no better time than to get connected than now. There's no better time to jump into a community that is centered around the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. As believers, we're called to jump into a community. And it's good on this level. It is awesome. But we're also called to be tight with each other. We're called to to do life on a one-on-one and a one-on-ten level where we have friends that we, that they have our back that we can call them when we blow up our engine and we're 30 minutes away from home. And I'm thankful that I have those friends who, who push me back into the word of God, who tell me, hey, you're not walking towards God. You're walking towards the word. You need to come back, bro. You need to come back. So if you're not in a small group, I'd encourage you, jump into a small group. You need to have men and women of Christ 
who are walking towards God that can also encourage you. So let's look at Hebrews 10.25. It says, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is on. Guys, church should be a priority. Church should be something that we don't, you know, go to every once in a while because, you know, I actually woke up on time. I'll be honest with you. This is my first 8 a.m. in a long time. And I live, I was, a, I was a resident here. I lived here. It was hard for me to roll out of bed before 8 a.m. and come to first service. I preferred the more 9.30 because that was a bit more of my uh, waking hours type time. But we're called to make church priority. I was lucky to grow up in a, well, I mean, I'm a pastor's kid, so I mean, I didn't really have much of a choice to go to church. But I was lucky to go up, grow up in a family that, that went to church every Sunday, that made it a priority. Whether it was a Sunday or a Wednesday, I mean, We were going to church. When the doors were open, we were going to church. Whether we were camping, I mean, whether we were on vacation, my parents made sure that we as a family were in the word of God with other believers. Because that's important. We are called to be in the word of God with other believers. Because life is not easy on our own. It's not. I'll tell you, when I've tried to done things on my own, it, it doesn't work out. It really doesn't. And so I want to encourage you, parents, grandparents, bring your kids. It's made an impact in my life. Every time I came to Sunday school, I probably wasn't dressed the most best way, probably mismatched all the time, but I was there. And that those, the truth of God's word was being instilled into my life daily. So parents, grandparents, I encourage you. If you've got kids in your life, if you've got neighbors, bring them with you. And I'm speaking to myself. We've got neighbors down the road that I just talked with a kid, and he said that his, he wanted to, wanted to come to church, but his parents weren't going to let him. And um, he wanted to come with his cousins. And so I want to encourage you. There are your neighbors, your cousins. Your kids, you, you don't realize how big of an impact. My faith for a while, because I was going to church with my parents, wasn't my faith for a while. It was my parents' faith. But when I learned what Jesus Christ did for me, what I, when I understood that, it went from my parents' faith to my own when I made that personal decision. In the second half of this verse, it says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the return is drawing near. Guys, there are going to be people who are not going to come to church. There are going to be believers who are not going to come to church. I want to encourage you, look, look next to you. Look to the person on your right. Matter of fact, give them a high five. Give that person the right and the left. You can't leave the person out on the left. High five. Guys, these people are not sitting here because they said, well, I woke up pretty early. I might as well just go somewhere, right? If they had enough points on their McDonald's app, they'd probably be at Mickey D's, to be honest. But instead, these people are here because they want to dig into God's word. They want, they want to listen to what God has for them. They want to lead their family in a way that God's called them to lead. You're not doing this on your own because when you jump into a gospel community, you're doing life together with other people that have struggles that maybe you've already dealt with and you can help them out. And maybe you're having struggles that, that they have already dealt with and they can help you out. I want to encourage you, jump into a small group. You're not alone. There are other people who are out there who are, who are wanting to make an impact on the kingdom of God. Because when you don't, and it's a slippery slope. Once you kind of push church to the side and don't make it a priority, it's really easy to sleep in. It's really easy to cuddle up with those sheets. 
and the AC is down to 60. Personal preference. But I want to encourage you. It's, it's a slippery slope. I, uh, the other day I was trying to get on online and play some games with some of my boys. And uh, they, they didn't show up. And so I was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just play a few games by myself. And I got to play in, and I ended up meeting this guy online. Was, we'll just call him Sammy. And uh, I met Sammy, and Sammy just started talking about his life. And again, I, Sammy was just, just building out his life. And I was like, Sammy, you know, where, where are you at with your walk with Christ? Have you, are you religious at all? Do you have any religious background? Sammy told me, he said, well, you know, growing up, I had a bit of a rough start. I got, got addicted to drugs at a young age in my youth, in high school, and alcohol, and I had to go into a boy's home. While I was in the boy's home, I actually found Christ. I committed to him. I was like, oh, that is awesome, Sam. That is awesome. He said, but, he said, but, I got out of that home and I, I went down to Florida, started working for myself, started doing really good. That he met a girl and uh, they started dating. They became girlfriend, boyfriend. They bought a house together. They moved in. That it was going well and we, we were dating for five years. That then when she broke up with me, I lost the house. He said, now I'm back up north with my parents, living with them. Guys, Sammy, he, he walked out of that community. He had that foundation of Jesus Christ, but he didn't build on that foundation. Instead, he built to the left of it. It reminds me of the story of the man who built on the sand. You know, and the storms and the rains came, and the winds blew, and his house was knocked down. Then there was a guy who built his house on a rock, a firm foundation. And the rains and storms came, and his house stood. Sadly for Sam, he didn't, he didn't jump into the community. He didn't build on that firm foundation. He didn't have other believers around him, real friends that were there to pull him back when he was going down the wrong road. That is why we need to do life together. That is why as a gospel community, we are called to step out. And maybe it's uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie. It can be weird sometimes, even as an extrovert, to meet new people. But whether you're the loudest extrovert out there, whether you're the quietest introvert, it doesn't matter. We all crave a connection with others. We all crave to have real friends that we can lean back on. And as believers, we're called to have those real friends in the church so that they can point us towards the word when there's some controversial things when we're struggling with things instead of pointing us to what the world says. So I want to encourage you. God has created us to stand up. He's given us this stand. Where can you plug in? Right now I'm, uh, I'm in two small groups myself with a gathering. If you're a college student, listen, get plugged into a small group. There are so many good small groups to jump into. And if you're in youth, they've got small groups for youth too. Jump into those small groups. I want to encourage you, young people, one of the greatest times to grow your faith is right now because you got a lot more freedom than you will when you're older, when you have a family, and when you're supposed to be leading your family towards God. Grow now. There's no reason to wait. I heard a quote that said, you know, the best time to plant a tree 10 years ago, but the second best time is now. Second best time is now, guys. Don't, don't look back 10 more years later down the road and say, man, that was the best time, but now it's now. Start now. And people who might not be considered younger, not going to say what age that is. I don't know. I'm not going to put a limit on that. Don't want to step on any eggshells there. But guys, we young people need somebody to look up to. This is a crazy world. 
there's a lot of shenanigans being thrown around. There's a lot of stuff that, man, we, we just don't know about as young people because we haven't walked through that yet. And older people, uh, young, people who aren't younger, we need you guys to step up. We need you guys to set the example for us because we don't have it all figured out even though we act like it. We need you guys. Jump into a small group. Man, I went to the 55-plus uh, dinner the other day, and I'll tell you, they got some good cooking. I wouldn't mind dyeing my hair in uh, some gray maybe and act like I got some wisdom and go in there whenever they have their food. I mean, uh, the gathering. Encourage you guys. Jump in. There's, there's literally over 40 groups that meet at the river on a weekly basis. There is a place for each of you guys to jump in. Why wait? I know that when I have, when I've been closest and strongest in my faith is when I had my brothers and sisters in Christ next to me, digging into God's word. Guys, when you're going to be strongest in your faith is not when you're doing it on your own. It's when you're in a biblical community, a gospel-centered community. The good news of Jesus, guys, that's what the gospel is. And if you've never experienced that, if you don't have that foundation to build on, there's no reason not to start now. You're going to have a chance here in a bit to, to make that decision if you want. Or maybe you just need to tell God that that you need to dive into a small group. You need to dive into deeper relationships with other believers. You're going to have that opportunity. As dad comes up, I just want you to think about that. What's holding you back? What's holding you back from making that decision? Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for checking us out online today. We would really love to connect with you, and there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, One of those is going to connect.therivercc.com, and that is an online connection card. All that means is you're putting in some of your information, and it allows us to be able to connect with you and build that relationship with you. Uh, There's also a couple other ways. One of those is our online prayer wall. Uh, You can go to pray.therivercc.com, and there uh, on that prayer wall, you can put in prayer requests so we can be praying for you. But you can also see other people's prayer requests and, uh, and lift them up in prayer as well. Um, You can also go to app.therivercc.com and what that does is that allows you to download our app and there you can not only see the prayer wall and fill out a connection card, but you can see past sermons, you can uh, see events that are coming up, and just all the ways that you can get plugged in. God is doing some amazing things here at the river and we're excited to be a part and we want you to be a part as well.